Alrighty, thanks for tuning in once again. It's Ishmael Sistrunk from the St. Louis American and STLAmerican.com, and you're here with In the Clinch, our boxing hangout. Here today, I got my co-host, uh, the man in charge, local boxing expert, Mike Dixon. Thanks for joining us again today. And Mike, we got a lot, a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Um, of course, the big card that everybody's looking forward to, the big name in boxing right now, the one who's selling all the fights, all the pay-per-views, making all the money, Floyd Money Mayweather. The moment he's coming up against Marcos Maidana this weekend, a big pay-per-view on Showtime. Um, <clears throat> so we're definitely going to get to that. But first, you know, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about this last weekend. Had some uh, excellent fights on Showtime Championship Boxing, um, as well as Klitschko did his thing on HBO, but we don't focus on the Showtime bouts. Uh, the main event was Keith, uh, one-time Thurman against Julio Kid Diaz. Um, I'll let you go ahead and talk about that bout. That bout, you know, ended up being a little anticlimactic. Uh, but tell us what you saw in that bout. Uh, how did Thurman look? Uh, we know it was a, you know, kind of an early stoppage. Um, but how did Thurman look? And do you think that that fight says, you know, did, did it tell us anything about it? Uh, first, all right, uh, no problem. First of all, but uh, let's just clear it up. That's that's my man Ishmael with the fight expert. I'm a uh, local uh, fight uh, avid fan. Uh, but <laughs> at, at, but uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, the the third fight I, I thought was uh, it was anticlimactic, but I also thought it was impressive uh, at the same time. Uh, you know, to get a guy like Julio Diaz who's been in there with pretty much everybody from 35 and you know, 47 here as of late towards the tail end of his career. Stop him on a body shot and basically make him quit on his stool, I thought was uh, quite impressive. You know, I, you know, myself, much like everyone else, probably would have liked to have seen uh, it go a little bit longer and maybe see a few extra rounds. But at the same time, I thought it was uh, very impressive to stop a guy like that, especially from a body shot. You know, just kind of, uh, it's just another constant reminder of just how hard this kid hits, man. I think uh, even with the the, the, the quick uh, cameo three-round appearance, I just I, th I thought he made a uh, another impact statement in I mean, yet another fight. Um, I guess you can make an argument whether or not it was a step up fight or not. But uh, you know, Diaz is uh, well experienced, but he's also well shop worn. So uh, you can you can that could be a plus or it could be a minus as far as his uh, resume goes. But yeah, I, I, I thought it was uh, nothing to take away Thurman and what his fault. So I think uh, it's got to go as another notch on his hat, man. You know, uh, Diaz is. Been a former, uh, world champion on two different occasions, so uh, I still think it's a nice feather for him to stick in his cap in, in, in addition to his resume. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And, you know, when I say anticlimactic, uh, that's not a shot at Keith Thurman because he came in and he handled his business. You know, uh, Keith Thurman, you know, I like his attitude. He's a guy where he's cocky, but he's just not, you know, he's not a butthole with it, uh, I'll say. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I like him. I expected him to come in and get the knockout. Um, but didn't expect it to go that quickly. But we've seen Keith Thurman hurt guys to the body, not guys out with body shots before. Um, so to see Diaz quit on his stool was kind of interesting because, like you said, Diaz has been pretty durable. Like, that's not something that you would expect from him. A lot of the people in the crowd, they were booing, you know, kind of, you know, you, you hear, oh, man, this is fixed or whatever. But he's not that guy. He's a guy that goes. He gives his, his heart, his blood, guts. Uh, and the fact that he stopped him after the third round, um, you know, with that body shot, I think he also got some punishing uh, headshots combinations in there. Uh, but that's a te testament to Keith Thurman's power. Uh, and so he, he looks like a guy who's going to be really dangerous in that welterweight division. We talked about a little bit last week, maybe seeing him matched up with Sean Porter you know, and kind of about to see, okay, who who's going to get Mayweather down the line? We actually heard the the uh, Showtime commentators talk about that a little bit. Is that uh, the best fight out there that you think, or is there somebody else that you rather see him fight next? Uh, you know what? I'm going to go against a little bit against the grain with that, man. This is uh, not a road I usually travel down, but I actually think that um, – I actually think that fight could use a little bit more seasoning, man. I, th I think that uh, Golden Boy is blessed to have two blue chip prospects right now, and uh, I actually would like to see that fight maybe come about maybe in a year or so, maybe. Uh, maybe next summer, maybe next fall. 
uh, go ahead and let it build. I know that's the the Bob Aram recipe, um, and you know we with uh, you know history is filled with times where you know they they, they kind of uh, tried to build something up and and it ended up backfiring on them, and maybe uh, one of the guy loses or takes a, a a loss that he wasn't supposed to take, or maybe a couple bad appearances, and then the fight doesn't have as much luster. But uh, I think in this case they have. Um, you know, enough blue chip prospects and enough established veterans along with a mix of world champions where um, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Sean Porter possibly take care of Kale Brooks if that's the way that fight goes. It looks like it is. They're going to put that together. If he's able to get past Kale Brooks and then maybe um, another fight after that and, and, and uh, maybe do the same thing with Keith Thurman, uh, get him because you know uh, the thing about Keith is he has looked uh, incredible here the last two two and a half years now probably but um, you know a lot of the guys you talk about a Soto Carras you talk about a Julio Diaz um, you know you talk about a Carlos Quintana while uh, those are names that are well known in the fight in the fight game there that he hasn't really faced anybody um, that's kind of not on the way down you know what I mean so. Um, I think maybe him fighting somebody a little bit more mid-range uh, and then a Sean Porter fight, and I think you have uh, more of a spectacle, more of a bigger event. And then, of course, you know what big events lead to. If you're able to win the big fight, then because of the close connection between Mayweather promotion and Golden Boy promotions, a lot of times they, you got a little leverage going into a Mayweather fight. So uh, I hope they don't do it too soon. I think this fall will maybe be a little bit too soon, and I, I think they can – you know, benefit from building the guys a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Porter, he's definitely going to have the Kell Brook fight. Kell Brook's, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure, mandatory, so uh, that fight should definitely happen. But I think the reason, the reason why it was attractive to me, I think the reason that it's starting to gain chatter throughout the boxing world is people are looking towards Mayweather. They want to see him in with a new, fresh face, somebody that uh, – that may be able to pose them a threat. So both of these guys are young right now. They may not be there <laughs> quite yet. Um, but, yeah, after a fight, it could be two fights, but I think people people want to see somebody built up who can fight Mayweather. We know Khan's fighting this week. Khan almost had the fight, um, you know, versus Mayweather this week. And people really don't care about that. Maybe it'll gain some steam after uh, this coming weekend. People don't care about that. You know, Mayweather's fought. A lot of these guys on Golden Boy already, but the people who they're talking about aren't exciting fans. So when you see a guy like Keith Thurman coming and knocking everybody out, or when you see Sean Porter coming and uh, you know getting these upsets or just you know manhandling guys, they say, okay, why well, would this person be able to do that against Mayweather? So I think that's why people are gaining steam. And instead of looking at those two building up a fight, a super fight against each other, they just want to get one of them into a fight with Mayweather. So we'll, we'll see how that works out. There were some other uh, really good cards, uh, re really good fights on the card last week. Uh, Lucas Matisse and uh, probably fight, definitely a fight of the year candidate uh, may very well be the uh, fight of the year. Lucas Matisse against John Molina. Um, heck of a scrap. Matisse um, was down, what, twice, I think, in the second round and once in the fifth round. Um, you know, and those were legitimate knockdowns. Even the one in the fifth round, uh, the commentators talked about behind the head, you know, possibly. It may have been, when you look at the replay, it was, but it was the way that um, Matisse was turning his head and the, work, the way the ref was, you had to call that a knockdown. To me, that's a legitimate knockdown. Uh, so we saw Matisse hurt, and he came back and just finished the fight. I mean, just, just like gangbusters. Once he got uh, Molina hurt, you know, he he got him out of there pretty quickly after that. But just a heck of a back and forth fight. What did you think watching that? You know, just that toe to toe action. We both said that hey, these are kind of um, you know opponents. You know, we thought Molina was going to get knocked out. Maybe it was going to be a little easier time. But he came up and wait. Showed that he had the power. Uh, showed a pretty good chin for most of the fight. Uh, how much respect do you give him? And just how much did you enjoy that fight? Oh, you know, I, I myself, like everybody else, I thought it was a great fight. You know, it was uh, back and forth. It definitely was something that uh, I think was uh, needed, you know. Uh, a lot of decisions been going on this year, you know, 12 rounds, a lot of them kind of one-sided. So, you know, uh, it was good to see a little back and forth action with, um, 
and it was a pleasant surprise because they ended up being matched up a little bit better than what we thought. You know, uh, Molina gave a good showing for himself. Uh, I myself, uh, I can't remember my exact quote, but I'm pretty sure I picked uh, maybe the fifth round last week. I can't remember, but I didn't see it going that long. Um, Might have even been earlier than that because, uh, you know, Molina has a reputation for being kind of chinny. So, uh, you know, it was it was a pleasant surprise, you know. Uh, if, we, if they could get more fights like that sprinkled in, uh, with the fight fans, I think I think it keeps the the interest going. I think it keeps the sport healthy. You know, when the fight fans are kind of, uh, you know, giving a nice little treat here and there. You know, not saying that you want to see every every fight slap down, drag out, brawl, but I think it's nice to have a little balance. And 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 I think last week's card definitely definitely uh, gave the fight fans a much needed uh, spice of excitement. Taste yeah. Of- yeah, absolutely. Now we saw Matisse. Of course, he um, he lost earlier to Danny Garcia. Uh, but in this fight, you know, he won. He won in an exciting fashion, so it's definitely going to be on everybody's radar as somebody who, you know, you want to see him fight because, you know, regardless, he's going to be an exciting fight. But is he further exposed in this bout, you know, by the fact that he went down twice by uh, John Molina and he was, again, legitimately hurt? It wasn't just necessarily a, a flash knockdown, but he got he got hurt. He got staggered a couple of times where he didn't even go down. So... Is he exposed a little bit, or you know, is this what he's always been? You know, just he, he's not much of a boxer as far as you know head movement and things like that. So is it just with that style he's going to get you know touched on that chin and that's going to happen? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. Those those are questions that we'll have to continue to uh, to watch and see if we find the answers to. I mean, uh, last two guys uh, really weren't in the running, you know, and uh, we know. Uh, Matisse had built a heck of a reputation of dishing it out, but now, uh, you know, maybe he was developing more of a, a bully type persona with his uh, ultra aggressive style. Now we're seeing guys that uh, stand the ground a little bit and and, 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 and and are into that type of style as well as themselves. So now we're trying to, it's interesting to see if he's going to continue to be able to uh, take as much as he can give because, uh, yeah, the last, uh, what, 23 rounds of uh, his career have been rather rough. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, if I would use the word exposed, but uh, I would say maybe uh, it's something that uh, somewhat of a blueprint is being uh, put together, and, and and as the film builds up, maybe guys are going to look and say, "Hey, look, uh, when Steel meets Steel, he don't always stand up so tall." So uh, maybe that is his his, his uh, you know the anti Matisse, you know, uh, beating metal with metal. I I don't know, you know, maybe he uh, was. A uh, little bit of residue left over from the Danny Garcia fight, and maybe he needs a few fights to get back in the swing of things, or maybe Molina was just tougher than what we thought. I don't, I, I don't know. Um, I think he's still no joke. Uh, I think he's still got to be dealt with. But uh, whether or not this is the, the start of a tailspin of him headed downward, I don't know. I guess maybe in the next uh, fight or so we'll see. Okay, and I just want a quick question. We don't even really have to discuss the Omar Figueroa and uh, Jerry Belamontes fight uh, in depth, but a quick question. Did you think that there was any controversy in that? You know, it was a a close fight, a split decision. Um, Some people talked about, hey, you know, this was controversial. Did you see it as a controversy, or who did you think won that fight? Um... I don't know if it was bad enough to say controversial, but uh, I didn't physically score the fight with a pen and paper. But uh, just watching the fight sitting on my couch, I thought Belamonte's won. Um, you know, I thought the I thought it was a close fight, so I can't say it was controversial. You know, it depends on what you like, I guess. You know, that's the age-old argument in boxing. You know, but uh, at the same time, I thought that the rounds that Belamonte's won were much more clear than the rounds that Figueroa won. Uh, Figueroa was there. He was uh, aggressive. He never stopped coming, and he was scoring. But um, he's doing a lot more slapping than I noticed before, uh, you know, before his uh, hand problem. So I started to wonder whether or not he hurt his hands again. But um, a lot of slapping, um, not, not really clean, solid punches. Um, was very aggressive and, and kept the pressure on, so he's definitely got to get – get points for that, but I just thought, you know, especially the first five or six rounds, I thought uh, 
Belomontes was putting on somewhat of a boxing exhibition. I mean, he was hitting him really clean, and his footwork was really effective, and he was in and out. And I thought with that, and then along with him, even though he wasn't as dominant later on, he still was competitive. I thought he put enough rounds in the bank to, you know, uh, win it fair and square, seal the, seal the victory. But, you know, the judges saw it uh, differently. We know how that goes, so. It yeah, is. Now that's that's crazy. That shows you about the you know styles and what you like. Cause I was the opposite. I thought Figueroa um, won it. You know, I thought he deserved to win it. Uh, it was a close fight. I wouldn't have you know raised a fuss if it went the other way. Uh, but I thought that Figueroa was the one who had a better start to the fight. I think um, you know Belafonte. Uh, he he won the first round, but then I think Figueroa, um, you know, he took a lot of the other rounds on that aggression. Um, you know, he was connecting a lot of punches. His opponent was moving around. He was boxing, but he wasn't throwing a whole lot of punches. Uh, so for me, even if you get, you know, say three or four good solid shots, but your man is pressuring you and, you know, lands and, you know, I'm not looking at comp comp box or show box, but you know, you, he lands, you know, 12, 13, 14, you know, solid shots applying that pressure and you land three or four backing away the whole fight, I'm going to give it to the aggressive fighter. Uh, so to me, I thought that Figueroa won uh, scoring the fight. Uh, I did think um, the opponent came on late, uh, had a good had a good showing of himself. It was, like I said, a close fight. Uh, but I thought Figueroa won, and, and I didn't think there was any controversy at all. But, you know, like you said, different people see the fight. Yeah. Yeah that's, because, yeah, that's why they use three judges, you know, yeah. so, you and know, even, you have three in, sit there and see three different things, so that's just, a, that's just a case in point. Yeah, and even in the judging, you know, you had two cards, the the two uh, that were really close, you know, one uh, for each guy, and then the third card, I mean, it was like 118, 110, so they didn't even yeah, have right. it close, yeah. and even that card, I could see where you would give those rounds to Figueroa the champion. I didn't mind wasn't that wide, but I could see where they would have that card. It wasn't like, oh, this guy's stupid. It's an outrage. Um, but I saw it. I didn't necessarily agree with it, but I saw it. So, interesting fight. Um, you know. Yeah, again, we, we, it's a difference of opinion, because uh, the first thing I thought when I heard that card was this dude was blind. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> again, just show you different opinion. I, I don't think it's... We both uh, agree that it's a, a it was a close competitive fight, so um, you know, uh, whenever it goes like that, you can't you can't give me too mad and cry uh, robbery or anything like that. You know, one guy sees it this way, one guy sees it that way, but you know, uh, I thought I thought you know, ten rounds or two was a little extreme, but hey, you know, that's how it goes. All right, and last, I just mentioned it. Don't even really want to talk about it. Uh, Vladimir Klitschko, you know, won via KO over Alex Leopai. Again, nobody really knew who Leopold was before the fight. Uh, nobody's going to know who he is after the fight. He went there and just looked like a fool. Um, got got manhandled. I heard people say, well, Klitschko, he didn't hold this fight. You know, he looked good. He didn't hold. But look at the opposition that's in front of him. So hopefully we'll see him matched up um, with somebody soon. Um, you know, we, we got a few interesting bouts, but I think Klitschko's really – you know, I mean, he's ran through the heavyweight division. There's not a whole lot out there for him, so he may chill out, hang on to the title for another year or two, but hopefully we'll see some of these young heavyweights kind of step in and take over there. Right. All right, so let's get to the moment. This is what everybody is talking about, what everybody's looking forward to. Uh, like I said, the biggest man in pay-per-view right now, Floyd Mayweather Jr. with Marcos Maidana. Uh, Maidana, of course, upset. You know, baby bro, Adrian Broner, uh, with that pressure, uh, took it to him. He, he was a big underdog going into that fight. Everybody thought, you know, hey, Broner has a similar style to Mayweather. Um, you know, he's going to go in and, and, and just take care of business. And we both, you know, picked uh, Broner in that fight. Maidana surprise. He, he came with a relentless attack. He punished him, hurt him, you know, over, throughout that fight over the 12 rounds. Do you think he'll be able to do the same against Mayweather? Will he have that type of success? No. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Box, uh, uh, Mayweather is a, is a boxing prophet. I mean, um, you know, um, doing a little bit of preparation for this fight, just kind of popping in some old film from, uh, you know, uh, some fights out of my library, and I was uh, – 
looking at uh, Madonna versus uh, Khan today, and I planned on looking at Madonna versus Alexander again tomorrow, and I'll probably watch the Broner fight again, just looking at his style versus uh, boxers. Um, you know, uh, looking at Khan hit him so clean, although, you know, granted that was back at, I want to say, the end of 2010 maybe. So uh, I'm sure he's come a long way underneath um, his new trainer and, you know, more experienced. But, uh, you know, this this scenario has been played out so many times, you know. It's obvious that uh, Mayweather knows how to handle his style. I mean, um, it's not too many different ways you can chalk it up. I mean, you know, uh, you can – People like to, to go back and look at the and talk about the Jose Luis Castillo fight, but you know it was always funny that people never mentioned the rematch. You know uh, they fought again. I want to say six months later, and it was a complete shutout uh, for Mayweather. Um, same thing. He looked real good against uh, Hatton, who tried to be aggressive and bully him. Um, had a closer fight with Cotto, but again um, that was. I think somewhat due to the style he chose to use, fighting Cotto a little bit more flat-footed, uh, toe-to-toe style. But uh, Guerrero is an aggressive come-forward fighter. Uh, Canelo is an ultra-aggressive offensive fighter. Um, and on and on. It's, it's, it just uh, it hasn't worked. And, you know, you probably can add up all those fights with, with guys with this style. I mean, there are different variations of it, but the game plan is the same. We're going to muscle the littler man. We're going to put a lot of pressure. We're going to throw a million punches. We're going to rough them up. We're going to try to catch them. Um, it doesn't work, you know. I, 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 you know, I mean, it's, it, he's shown that time and time again. If he can do nothing else, he can look spectacular against this style. Um, I think in one of our earlier shows that you alluded to, that you actually at this point kind of would have rather seen him fight Khan just for, uh, you know, a different variation of the style, you know. And uh, I think this is going to be the same thing. I think he's going to come into the ring, uh Carrying his confidence from training camp and all his, uh, you know, they, uh, camp speaking positive energy and you can do this. This is your time. You're the man. And I think just like the other guys, I think he's going to find them very hard to hit the first two or three rounds. I think he's going to find himself thinking. Um, and then I think he's going to find himself getting pot shot it and then maybe possibly hurt a few times. And he's going to shut his offense down and maybe what's going to close to another 12 round decision. I just, have a hard time seeing another scenario play out. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is going to be pretty much easy work for Mayweather. You know, I said that a few weeks ago in the fight, didn't uh, pan out like that. But uh, the thing, you know, you, you mentioned uh, Robert Guerrero, uh, the ghost in that fight. And when they announced that fight, you know, I said Mayweather's easy. This, this is going to be this is gonna be easy. And then, you know, we had some people that were talking so much about Guerrero. They're pumping him up. You know, I know Factoid was big, like, hey, he can he can pressure him, he can hurt him. And I let that influence me. I still picked Mayweather. I still thought Mayweather was going to win. But I said, well, you know, if Guerrero does this, maybe he has a chance. And, you know, I let all that pre-fight hype, uh, <laughs> you know, skew me a little bit to where I thought, okay, maybe this is a closer fight than I originally thought when it's announced. So when this fight was announced, I said, no, I'm sticking to my gut right now. That this is going to be an easy fight. Mayweather is is going to box circles around him. It's possible he can get a knockout. I, I think you're probably right. It's going to be a decision. Um, Madonna just doesn't really bring anything to the table that's going to give Mayweather problem. Yes, he has that pressure. He was able to give Broner problems. Broner and Mayweather have similar styles, but Adrian Broner's defense is not in the same league as Floyd Mayweather's. And, and that's something that we've known, you know, guys who've watched them both have known this for a while. I think the casual fan, you know, they see the similarities in their stances and, you know, the speed. And, and so they think, okay, well, he, he hurt Broner, so he can hurt Mayweather. But they're in a different – it's a different league. It's like Broner is double-A – you know, if we're talking baseball, Broner's double-A defense and Floyd Mayweather is – you know, the major leagues, you know, all-star major leagues. It's not even it's not even close. It's not even comparable. So all those wild looping, chopping shots uh, that Madonna throws are going to miss. He's not he's not going to be able to hit him. Uh, and I think it's going to be an easy fight, personally. I did all everything you just said, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
You're supposed to argue with me. Don't you watch TV when they just argue? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can't on this one. I got to jump in that car with you on that one, brother. You're not being a fool on this one, huh? I'm oh, sorry. I got to jump in that car. All right. So so let's look at the undercar bouts then. Um, we, we just talked about both of them. Uh, first, let's go. Amir Khan, um, he's going to be in a fight. Uh, was it Carlos Molina? Uh, no, uh, Luis, Luis Colazzo um, and Amir Khan. That, that's an interesting fight. You know, Colazzo is coming off of a knockout. Uh, Colazzo's actually, you know, he's not really known as a big puncher. He's racked up, you know, a fair amount of knockouts over the past couple of years. But when you really go and look into that record, when you investigate it a little deeper, you'll see that these are against guys with 13 and 9 records, with 14 and 8, you know, 7 and 7. You know, the guys that he's been knocking out are not world-class level guys. So um, the problem that I think that he's going to have, you know, Amir Khan's, the chink in his armor is his chin. You know, he doesn't have a good chin. He's, he's able to go down. But will Colazzo be able to get to that? You know, uh, Amir Khan, gift, you know, he's a very physically gifted fighter. He has speed. He has power. He just doesn't have a good chin. That's that's that, that kryptonite, that chink in the armor. I don't think Colazzo will be able to get to it. I think Colazzo, the, the speed of Khan is going to be too much. You know, Khan gets in and out very well. Colazzo, he may make it tricky a little bit, but I just don't think he has the power that's really going to stop Khan. Do you agree or you disagree? I don't know about that anymore. You know, um, again, I was watching that fight today. It was, it was uh, one of the reasons I wanted to watch that fight was because, uh, of course, I knew we were going to be doing the show, so I wanted to have some, you know, previous fights fresh in my mind so I could, you know, kind of have some fresh analysis in my brain when we talk. And, you know, it's funny, man, because, like I said, that fight, I want to say they said it was December of 2010. And it was nice looking at that old version of Khan. He was with, uh, he was confident. Uh, he didn't have the Peterson and Danny Garcia uh, losses on his record at the time. Uh, he hadn't gone life and death with Julio Diaz, who we spoke about earlier in the show. Um, all those things are confident killers. Uh, he looked so strong and confident, you know, in that fight. And that Khan was fun to watch. The flip side of that, I think that guy is gone. Um, if that version of Khan fought Colazzo, then yeah, I think it's a whitewash for Khan. Uh, one reason I would have picked Khan anyway was because if you go through and look at uh, uh, Colazzo's resume, he whenever he's the B side, he never performs well. He didn't look. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm sorry, I take that back. Um, I take that, that, that that's totally wrong because he fought well against Birdo and he also did well against Hatton. But he's what what I should have said is he's never been able to get over the hump uh, when he's the B side. Uh, like you said, he, he the last couple of years he's been the A side on some smaller cards in New York and he stretched a couple guys. Uh, he had probably the biggest win of his career beating Victor Ortiz, which as you and I both know doesn't mean that much to you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just I just have a hard time. Uh, going full-heartedly with Colasso based on his track record. Okay. With that being said, the way Khan has looked as of recent, I have a full-time jumping 100% behind Amir Khan as well. Um, I think uh, the mental is damaged. I think it is because uh, when you look at how he fought Carlos Molina, who's fighting Broner on the undercard, and when you look at how he fought Julio Diaz, you can see the doubt in him. You know, that same confident, explosive, ultra-aggressive guy that we saw against McDonough, that guy was gone. Why? Well, I mean, he's hit the deck a couple times, you know. That's that's just human nature. If you, you've been down there, you do that, you're going to do what you can to limit yourself from going down there again. Um, and he's also uh, under Virgil Hunter now, who, um, let's be honest, uh, a guy who he's, who he's groomed and put his blueprint on 100% is uh, – is, is, uh, Andre Ward, who, who's not actually a, a <laughs> exciting fighter. And I can see uh, with the, his last couple of fights with Virgil Hunter what he's trying to do. And uh, he's pacified Khan. He's already been pacified because of the knockouts. Now I think with this um, more slower pace, more conservative type style that Virgil Hunter is implementing, I think he's 
even less of that action fighter that he was. So with that being said, I think this version of Khan is going to give this version of Colazzo a lot more opportunities that would not have been there. Um, so I think right now, as we speak now, it's the definition of a 50-50 fight. Um, if somehow the old Khan can show up, then I think he'll look good against Colazzo, maybe even possibly get him out there. Uh, if the version of Khan that we've seen the last two fights is there with this ultra confident, confident colossal on this win streak with this, you know, uh, new resurgence of uh, confidence, I think we can see Colazzo with the upset. Um, I love picking fights, but this one is hard to pick. Um, if I had to pick one, I very, very reluctantly would pick Khan. But, again, I think it's the definition of a 50-50 fight, and I think it can go either way. I think it can be Colazzo pot-shotting uh, Colazzo, landing the cleaner punches and winning a 12-round decision, or I can see uh, Khan using his speed to uh, decision Colazzo. Either way, I don't think it would be a knockout, but I think it's a great 50-50 fight. Yeah, I, I don't see it that way. I think Khan, I think Khan is the prohibitive favorite in my eyes, I, and, and that's no disrespect to Colazzo. Colazzo is a is a solid fighter. He's a good fighter, um, but again, like you said, Khan, because his chin has been tested, because his styles changed a little bit, he's going to be more defensive, uh, which I think is going to be less opportunities uh, for Colazzo to catch him with a solid punch. And Colazzo's just not that devastating of a puncher, uh, regardless of, of his last fight. Um, like you said, that knockout against Victor Ortiz. Victor Ortiz didn't want to get up. You know, he, he was on the ground. He got knocked down with a good shot. Um, looked like he could have got up, but he just he just gave up. You know, at this point, it like he could have got up at three. <laughs> exactly. He just said, "I don't." He like do to this go anymore. more animation just to kind of uh, <laughs> make a selling point that I'm woozy. You know, it's like he got up to his to his knees. It's like, oh man, I'm getting up too quick. But, right, right. Uh, let me let me rub my eye. You know, like oh man. Let me, yeah, let me, he he like, stumbled and accidentally got up. He was just trying to roll and got. Oh wait, let me let me get back down here real quick. He lay down. No. Yeah, he, he stayed down for that 10. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I just don't think Colazzo had – well, I'm not even going to say that. I'm not going to say he doesn't have the power to get Khan out of there because probably not a whole lot of power is needed. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't think that he'll, he'll get that opportunity. I think even if he gets, you know, a flash knockdown, I don't think he has that, that power to get him out of there. Um for good, but we'll we'll see. Uh, whenever you're dealing with a guy with a chin like that, you know, it, it's one punch away. But I think Khan's gonna win that easily. Uh, going back to Baby Broner, um, you know, the guy who let, let's keep it real. He was supposed to be fighting Madonna here. He had a rematch clause uh, that he was supposed to fight him. He, you know, gave way. Of course, Mayweather money talks. I'm sure he, you know, I don't know if he got step aside money, but you know, considering he. He thinks Mayweather is his big brother. It's no surprise that he stepped aside. Me personally, if a guy will not knock me out, but if a guy got in my butt like that, I want the rematch. I'm not stepping aside. I don't care how much money you give me. I want the rematch. Broner decided to do differently. He's matched up against Carlos Molina. Um, Molina, again, he does. He, he's an active fighter, but he doesn't have a whole lot of punching power. He's not really um, getting guys out of there. You know, if there's a weakness in Broner's game, which we talked about, you know, that aggression got to him, that power that Madonna has got to him, was able to, you know, put him in danger to get him backpedaling. I don't think Molina has the power. He he comes forward, but I don't think he has the power to really make uh, Broner uncomfortable. So I think I think this is another fight where I see Broner winning pretty clearly. Uh, do you disagree with that, or 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 do you think this is a 50-50 fight as well? No, I'm gonna, uh, you know, put my two cents in on a, on a on a couple levels on there. Uh, with that situation there, I do kind of understand. Uh, I think Broner wanted the fight. Uh, you know, he was on social media immediately saying he was going to exercise his 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 rematch clause, and he never really came up off of that. Um, you know, and then it came out later on that his, his advisors and his managers were not real big on the idea of him getting right back in uh, immediately with Madonna. So uh, on this on this 
particularly the case. I, I probably would. I think that was the right move. Um, and as we saw with Bradley and Pacquiao um, a couple weeks ago, sometimes um, a little marination between uh, a, a rematch can be good. I, I, I think um, being that Bradley was able to be in an action fight and uh, with uh, Prevnikov and then beat Marquez, I think it kind of helped sell the uh, the rematch. So um, if McDonough gives a somewhat decent showing for himself, like maybe, you know, which I think at best is maybe winning two rounds, you know, um, and then maybe it's a, you know, a little time off and or maybe even a fight after this, then I, I think later on down the line it might benefit uh, Broner a little bit better. Um, but see, you're, you're, you're talking intelligent. You're talking the business side of it. You're talking the, the Mayweather, Al Heyman, you know, let's maximize a profit. Let's take it. I'm talking about the fighting part. I'm talking about I want to see these two guys back in the ring. I understand yeah, yeah, why yeah. he did it. But me, well, yeah, you know, I mean, my you know, butt, that. it's my pride. I'm going to say, no, we got to do this right now, especially if I think I can beat him. But I understand what you're saying. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, I think I think with uh, Broner it was the pride part. But I just think you know uh, these guys are getting managers are getting ten percent of the person. I think they're protecting their investment. You know, uh, if they would have fought the rematch, I mean, I would have been tuning in just like I did the first one. I thought it was an interesting matchup. So as a fight fan, of course I would have. But I'm just saying. Uh, I do see where they were coming from this time, maybe stalling them out a little bit, throwing them you know, like, no, oh, man, get back in there, boom, go handle that, you know, and then it blew up in their face because the dude obviously saw the dude had a recipe to fight Broner. So I don't know how much he could have changed within a, a five-month count, I mean, a five-month span. Like I said, I think uh, the rematch clause mandated that they had to fight again within six months. You know, I think they were trying to put it together in, in April or May when it, you know, when it first came out. So uh, I just, I, I, I do see, you know, maybe people say, hold on, hold on, hold on, let's, let's reset, you know, let's recalibrate, you know, go ahead and get your fight, get your, get your mojo back, get your rhythm back. Um, and then we'll, 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 we'll catch up with him later on down the line. Uh, I so, think. So what's your pick in this fight? How do you think he fares against Molina? Picking this fight this weekend? Yeah. You're going to stop Molina. He's going to stop Molina because um, although Madonna kind of showed that to me that Broner, you're not an A-level fighter right now, uh, he is a damn good B-level fighter. And guys like this, he gets rid of. Uh, you know, he, he showed that coming up, you know, when he was building that momentum and building that clout. Uh, let's keep it real. He was stretching cats. I mean, he was. I mean, uh, whether you like him or you hate him, uh, I think people – were drawn to him because uh, he went about it the wrong way, kind of with his mouth being ultra ignorant. But at the same time, he was uh, also putting on uh, exciting performances. He was kind of the anti Mayweather, where he had Mayweather style, but he was ultra aggressive with it. So uh, that I did like about him. Uh, he would sit down on his punches a lot more, and uh, but Lena's not going to be able to duplicate what Madonna did. That I do know, and I think it's going to give. Uh, Broner a lot of opportunities to get his get his get his his offense off, and I think eventually he's gonna catch up with him and get him out of there. Yeah, Molina, you know he's seventeen and one, only seven knockouts. So like I said, even though he he a whole different type of power than what McDonough got. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that that pressure isn't quite gonna be the same uh, in that fight. So. All right, well, what what do you think is next? Let's get back to Mayweather. He's a headliner. He's a guy people want to hear about. What do you think, assuming that he wins, um, what do you think is next for Mayweather? Is he going to fight Khan? He's already said, hey, I'm going, I'm coming to the U.K. after the fight. Is that the next fight? Are fans going to, you know, accept that fight? Um, or what else do you think is next for him? Uh, if I had a crystal ball, and I, if I had a crystal ball, I would think his next, I think he's got three fights left. I wouldn't be surprised if they were... If Khan is, especially if Khan is impressive, I can see uh, them realizing that the fight really isn't a big stale here over in the States. Uh, maybe him fighting Khan over in England. Uh, I hear that Danny Garcia is going up to 47. Uh, if he can win one more fight at 140, maybe Lamont Peterson, who's a, who's a you know, I'm a fan of his. Uh, if he can beat Lamont Peterson and then maybe a fight uh, maybe again in December, I think he might be ready for him next May. Uh, and then by that time, like I said, if Porter and uh, 
Thurman can keep their momentum going, fight each other. I think by next September you got uh, a good opponent for them uh, around that time. I think those guys will be ready. So I would have to say, again, just guessing, maybe Khan in September, maybe Danny Garcia next May, and then the winner of Porter and Thurman next September. And that, that 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 would be interesting. I wouldn't mind seeing. You know, I'm a fan of Danny Garcia. I uh, wouldn't mind seeing that fight. Wouldn't mind seeing either Porter uh, or Thurman in there with him. So we'll we'll see. Of course, there's other names across the pond. You know, we're hearing a little bit. We're hearing De La Hoya saying, "Hey, he wants to work with Top Rank." Of course, there's that Schaefer De La Hoya feud going on. This typical boxing drama. You know, a lot of mess going on. But um, I mean, this is a big card. I personally, I think it's uh, you know, the A side guys are gonna gonna win pretty easily. But any time that Mayweather is fighting, you know, you bring the masses out. People are interested in boxing, so uh, that's that's always a good thing. The last thing I want to talk about on that fight, the pay per view, seventy five for the HD. I don't understand why they still have. I may have talked about this last week, but I'm gonna rant about it again. I understand why they still even sell the pay-per-views in standard definition. They, you know, start off $64.95. HD is a norm now. Like, that's the regular broadcast signal. If you don't have cable, you're watching in HD unless you have a converter. Um, 75 bones for the fight. Do you think that's going to affect how much it sells at all? Will you, Mike Dixon, be paying, dropping the 75 to watch the moment? Uh, one, I looked that up today. I don't know what cable uh, provider you have, but I know Charter is 65 either way. Is uh, it? Okay. Yeah, 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 it is. I did. I looked at that today. So, uh, either way, it's too much. Why you would ask that question, Ish, I don't even know. You know me for too long. Uh, no, I'm not paying that much money. Especially for no one-sided Mayweather fight with a trumped-up uh, one- 50-50 fight on the undercard. Um, I'll be at a bar or somebody's house watching it. Uh, I will watch it live. I haven't missed a Mayweather's fight. Then Lord knows when. So um, just be that's just the fight fan part of me. It's in my blood. So uh, can I honestly sit here and say I'm not going to find somewhere to watch it? Yes, I will. But can I see myself spending my heart on ducats for – a fight that we just discussed, I think a guy might do well to win two rounds. I can't do it, brother. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just I just can't do it, man. Um, it, I think it is what it is because people have allowed it to be what it is. Um, he did this for uh, – when did he first go up, bitch, man? Uh, I know Colazzo he beat definitely was a serious bump, but I think he went up to the 55 even before that. Um, so Probably I don't know. Your fight when it's uh, really started yeah. to go up. He's yeah, been he up for a while. Again. Yeah, he went up again lately with that um, with that last fight with um, yeah. Canelo. Yeah, that, the Alvarez. Um, I guess that was that was a huge fight. When I totally bought into the hype, thought it was going to be good. Maybe even had an opp opportunity for an upset. But uh, this, no man, no man. The 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 the, the price should meet the demand. Um, Mayweather knows that this is not built as a competitive fight. That's why he tried to put some solid names on the undercard. Believe me, that's what was behind that. So um, eventually it's like, well, when is it going to stop? I mean, this dude is filthy rich, and he keeps trying to get more out of the out of the pot, you know. Um, I think maybe it might be good if, he, if his numbers dip a little bit. I mean, I think he's consistently hit the one million mark here ever since De La Hoya, so – uh, maybe it would do uh, his ego a little bit good if maybe people say, you know what, I, I, I like this, but, you know, what's going to be 85 next time? You know, I'm not doing it. So maybe if he dipped back down to maybe around a half million mark, maybe they would see uh, the error in their ways because this is, this is getting outrageous, man. Yeah, but they, I mean, they know how to sell a fight. You know, they know how to sell a fight. Mayweather's the whole time been talking about, you know, the power. They've been building it. Oh, Madonna has the... You know, he, he, he can end the fight with one shot. Does anybody who's really a boxing fan who shot. follows it, right, does anybody believe that? No, but you have so many people who are fans of the Mayweather persona uh, that don't follow it closely where they just believe it. They, they'll go and they'll look at highlights of Maydana, you know, knocking guys out of him, knocking Adrian Broner down. They say, yeah, he has the power to do this in one punch. 
I'm not buying it. I don't believe it. Um, I may have been wrong about the price. I had to go back and check. I got DirecTV. I saw it was $64.95 for standard def, and I I may have just assumed because we've always seen high def is $10 more. Um, But regardless, you know, I think that $50, you know, we have $50 pay-per-views for a while. I think that's a that's a good range. You know, I'm willing to pay fifty dollars for a good pay-per-view fight card. I think that's reasonable to ask people. But yeah. once you get, to uh, the- I, I, I'm working overtime the next day that day. So uh, would it benefit a guy like me to, uh, yeah, say, oh, uh, fifty dollars? I'm like you. I give him fifty. I mean, I, I probably would have put. A- All right. It looks looks like we got a little connection issue, uh, Mike. Not sure if you're still there. Um, but regardless, that that was the end of what we had to talk about, man. A lot of interesting fights going on this weekend. Let us know who you have picked. Do you have uh, Mayweather? Do you think Maydana can come and get an upset? Um, it, it'll be interesting. It's definitely a, a card that a lot of people are going to tune into. Uh, so make sure you leave the comments below. Subscribe. We do this every Monday. Um, night. We've been starting around 8.15 here lately, uh, but sometime around 8 o'clock. Uh, check us out here. Again, I'm Ishmael Sistrunk from the St. Louis American uh, Boxing Columns on stlamerican.com and follow us each week here on In the Clinch. We'll check you later. See ya.